the third presentation in our session on women is by Emma Zoha. Emma is a postdoctoral fellow at the Max Planck Institute for Human Development, the Center for History of Emotions in Berlin, and she completed her doctorate at the Hebrew University in 2019. So please, Emma, the floor is yours. Um, okay, so first of all, thank you very much. Um, I would like to talk about something that it's um, uh, in the framework of my big project and uh, I kind of zoom in to, um, to understand it a bit more and I would like to share it with you. So uh, in 1929, the Polish Jewish newspaper, Nasz Przegląd, announced Miss Judea contest, beauty pageant exclusively for Jewish ladies. Immediately after the announcement, Jewish women from all over Poland sent their photographs to the, to the newspaper. 130 photos of the contesters were published in stages almost every day for two months. The newspaper readers were asked to vote for the 10 prettiest contesters through a coupon that was attached to the newspaper. The big winner was Miss Sophia Oldak and the first lady in waiting who won seven thousand uh, votes was Miss Lisa Halkavi. The awarded prize was a professional photo shoot session and 700 zloty. Immediately after the announcement of the winners, the new Jewish beauty queen Miss Oldak turned into a um, popular figure and her presence was very much appreciated in any cultural event of the Jewish community. In the following year, in March 1930, the Yiddish newspaper Unser Express launched an additional beauty contest for Jewish lady, for Jewish ladies. Sorry. The process was similar. Two weeks um, after the advertisement, photos of the contester started to be published in the newspaper. Each and every day from mid-March to the end of June, two to eight photos of the contesters with their serial number, full name, a cut of voting, um, a full name, sorry, and hometown were printed on the, on the front page of the newspaper. In addition to the photos, a cut of voting form was printed next to the contesters' photos. And during the last weeks of, um, last weeks of the contest, a big illustration of Caesar's was uh, printed on the whole front page, as we can see in, the, in this photo, in order to attract the reader's eyes and to demonstrate to the voters what they need to do in order to influence the results. In this talk, I aim to focus on two elements related to the exclusive Jewish beauty uh, contest in interwar Poland. First, I will present the aesthetics and fashionable elements of the uh, typical Jewish young women by finding the common dominators of the pictures sent to the contest. By observing the hundreds of contesters' photographs, one can sketch the desired female beauty ideal of the Jewish community in the 30s. Due to the fact that the number of the photographs uh, that were published was enormous, I use uh, quantitative research methods and as we will see, my findings are based on a big data extracted from the photographs collection. Um, in the second part of my talk, I will present the vivid discussion that the, con uh, that the contest um, aroused both in Jewish community in Poland and in other Jewish communities abroad. Uh, the, dis the discussions regarding the religious and moral elements of the contest itself reflected the rapid transformation that the worldwide Jewish community underwent during interwar years in various topics as secularity, gender, fashion, and entertainment. So as said, coming to examine the Polish Jewish beauty ideal, I decided to use big data of over 300 photos of the contesters of the contest held in the two Jewish newspapers. Um, looking at the photos, I chose 20 different variables to try and translate the visual objects into a more measurable system. Using Excel program, I created a table in which each photo was ranked accordingly, according um, to those variables. So I had 
hair and uh, hair brow style, hair length, uh, necklace, type of necklace, etc. Generally speaking, some details are worth mentioning and in the meantime, you can enjoy the collection uh, in front of you. So 90% of the contestants wore no earrings. Among those with earrings, 50% had hanged earrings. 60% had no necklaces. Among those with necklaces, pearls necklace was the most common, around 80%. 80% um, wore lipstick, which was the most common type of makeup. Regarding eyebrow style, almost 50% had thin eyebrows and 50% had thick eyebrows. Half of the contestants sent photos in which they smiled. 75% did not show their teeth. Over 60% had bangs. Fair was a clear symbol of wealth in interwar years uh, and was not that common, less than 10% wore fell. 50% had some kind of cleavage and 95% 95, 95 had no hat or hair cover of any type. With naked eyes, watching these photos, I felt that there are two different types of fashion style dominated. Hence, the next step was to empirically examine my hypothesis. I defined clusters of variables that define each type of beauty ideal. Almost 50% of the contestants completely fit one of the two types. So, um, the first type, which was more Western style, includes wavy, wavy hair, booby cop and side hair parting, and statistically, among type one, fur, necklaces, earrings, and cleavage was more common. Type two was a more traditional style and includes long non-curly hair and middle hair parting. Um, the other variables were more conservative and included simple or color shirts, no or minimalist jewelries and decorations. Type one was more common as almost a third of the contestants completely fit its defined variables. As the two newspapers had different target audience, I assume that there will be a difference in the beauty ideal the, and type of photos sent to each. Using statistical tests, which was designed to examine statistical significance of differences in prevalence between groups, I examined my assumptions once again. Surprisingly, no specifically um, significant difference was noted. Type one, which, um, uh, which more resembled the Weimar Republic and the Western beauty ideal, was slightly more common in the Unser Express um, newspaper, which was published in Yiddish and was directed to the, let's say, common people. Furthermore, the winner of the contest in the Unser Express, as we can see um, um, in the, for me, it's the, the right side of the screen. You can see 1930, uh, so this is the, the finalist. So, um, the winners of the contest in Unser Express could be defined as type one style. Um, we can see in here, um, again, Unser Express, um, the middle photo, this is the, the, the beauty queen, um, which is, she's much more type one. Um, a ty a type one style. In Nash Pszeglon, which target the higher classes of Polish jewelry, Type two was related, uh, relatively more common, and the winner fitted type two style, as we can see in here. Um, to conclude this part uh, of my talk, uh, so we can draw uh, some conclusion. First, and not surprisingly, we can see that fashion took an important part in the life of interwar Polish jewelry. Regardless of the type, style, or fashion, each photo represents an effort made to look attractive and desired. Furthermore, furthermore, tens of thousands of people spent time and money in order to vote for their favorite contester, 
as a national, um, um, for their favorite contester. As a national minority spread all over Poland, these kind of ethno-specific entertainment activities were important in the shaping of national identity, even those who opposed to the contest, which I will elaborate it, uh, a bit later, saw it as a national event. Last, we can conclude that in spite of the differences among different groups in Polish Jewelry, they, they still share similar characteristics and um, experience similar influences as can be seen in the beauty ideal that I just uh, presented. Moving on, so um, as Miss Judea was the first Polish Jewish beauty contest, most of the criticism was referred to it. The public discussion that took place regarding the beauty contest revolved around a number of issues and was directly related to the style of the community in which the discussion took, took place. So for example, the Jewish community in the United States was much more accustomed to such events. So um, they reported in great details on the Miss Judea context throughout its stages. The Jewish community in Budapest, which in the same year, a Jewish origin uh, woman was chosen to represent Hungary in the Miss Europe uh, pageant, also chose to report exclusively um, extensively on the Jewish-Polish contest. In Palestine, on the other hand, voices were heard against the contest. The Yeshuv sought to oppose the so-called bourgeois uh, characteristics of the contest. However, the double standard of the Zionist movement in Israel was prominent as similar beauty contest was held in Palestine since the early 20s. The attitude toward the beauty pageant uh, with, uh, within the Jewish society in Poland was dual and uh, ranged from enthusiasm to rejection. Local Jewish newspapers across Poland reported on the contest and, look, and took pride in publishing exclusive photos of the winners and launched similar local contests. The president of the Mossad Keila, the Jewish Community Council in Warsaw, Farbstein, who himself was a member of the Mizrahi, invited the new beauty queen, Miss Yudea, to an impressive ceremony at the meeting of the Kehila Council. However, and despite the warm welcome given to the elected beauty queen at the Kehila meeting, there were also voices that opposed to the existence of this contest. The most prominent opposer were, were, of course, the Orthodox, who claimed the beauty pageant um, contradict the principle of the Jewish modesty, of the uh, women's modesty in Judaism. The socialist parties, the Bund and Polizion, refer to the contest as a popular game. They call it spiel but opposed to the sponsorship that the leadership of the Kehila chose to give to the contest. The Bund representative, representative Himmelfarb pointed out that Farbstein's invitation to the so-called Miss to the Kehila meeting was pointless. As we can see, uh, issues of beauty and pleasure have become a fertile ground to the, uh, for, the public, for public debate and political clashes. I will now elaborate on the visual aspect of the criticism as uh, was presented in the newspaper. A year before Unser Express held its beauty um, contest, they harshly criticized the Miss Judea contest. A caricature published in the Unser Express revealed the truth beyond the contest and commend the um, capitalist element in the prize money as well as, as the deceit element of the contest. The ridiculous girl is holding a mask and clearly is not the type of girl one should expect uh, participate in the contest. Gender criticism aroused as well and presented the image of men as consumer and the women as consumer good or as showcase, showcase product. A caricature published in the moment in summer 1930 showed three grotesque women 
and three, and three grotesque men observing them. Uh, the headline, the Queen pageant, as well as the characteristic, uh, the characters' uh, facilitators, the women seem to be walking as modeling uh, runway, and the men um, uh, examining the uh, appearance hint at the criticism the newspaper editor sought to convey. A close look at the caricature reveals that there is an identity between the characters, as I marked um, with numbers on the photo. It can perhaps be assumed that the criticism is that not only the, wom the, woman, the women are humiliated by actually participating in the beauty contest, but also the men by the very fact that they consume it. In a sense, th this criticism referred to the entire Jewish population that fell victim to the empty and ridiculous event that put all those uh, who took part in, in a grotesque and miserable light. To conclude, um, I would like to zoom out a bit um, on the visual object uh, prism and to add another layer to the discussion. The act of choosing a Polish Jewish beauty queen is a public act in which the women are no longer belong to the private sphere, but also, even if passively, um, uh, presented in the uh, public sphere. The, this symbolized the transformation of the Jewish community in the modern era, post, uh, and particularly in the new democratic Polish state. The Jewish beauty queen became a national symbol that represented the modern Western-influenced society. Bourgeois values as equality, aesthetics, pleasure, self-fulfillment, etc., took a greater part in the public discourse and practices in this newly forming community. Thank you.